Y'all, we're so excited to have you here. Like, Thanks legitimately. For us. This is uh, we, we, it's your church. Look at Hope oh, City it's Church. So oh, it's oh, amazing. Love these people. And we're speaking to multiple campuses, obviously, today. And there's a whole group of people that uh, fought to get in the building, couldn't get in this building, so they're in additional seating. The highly sanctified ones who gave everybody else the, the seats. That's oh, wow. the, oh, yeah. They have fought to be in this room. They're like, yeah, I'm not that sanctified yet. I'm still going to sit in my seat. But <laughs> I'm saved, but I drink a little, like that kind wow. of crew, you know, wow. like the. You That's know. the next service. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, not this group. They had coffee, croissants. They drank coffee this morning. The next service is the problem service. Yes. Anyways, we're so honored to have y'all here. When we prayed through uh, who we were believing to accept the invitation, uh, y'all were at the top of our list. Or I assume the one you prayed about said no, and here we are. Nope. Well, we asked Kirk Cameron. He said no. I'm just kidding. That wasn't oh, funny. I thought that was funny. The beaches were booked, so you yeah, know it is what it is. We'll know? bring them in next year, but oh, we're so honored. Oh my goodness! Uh, the last service was next level, and we believe this one is as well. How many of y'all came with expectancy? Come on. Yeah. We, we talk about this a lot, but when you take down notes in real time, your retention rate goes to thirty-five percent. And there's going to be these little nuggets all throughout today's service that you're going to want to jot down, even some things on the screen that maybe you'll want to take a picture of. If you take down notes and then go back and apply it, you've heard my spiel before. It goes up to 90 to 95% retention rate. We are never supposed to stop growing. None of us have arrived at the level of like, well, I've, I've got enough of God. Like, but if you're only a hearer, if you're like, well, let's see if these four have anything good to say, and you come with a closed off spectator sort of positioning. It's that spirit of nirvana. Here we are now, entertain us. Yes. God doesn't want all that. Nope. Right. And you only pick up about 5%. So I want to talk about something real quick before we dive in. Y'all have written, now you're, you're authors, you're amazing, so many great books, but your new book, The Marriage Devotional, is so incredible. You brought a limited supply. I told you to bring a lot more and you didn't. Oh my gosh. But they're for sale outside and it's going to be great. Well, um, this, we're, Jenny and I are so excited because for the first time we wrote a book together. She's yeah. written, I've written, but this was us working together. If you want to really test what your marriage has got on the inside, try and write a book together. I tell you that. <laughs> uh, but we had so much fun working on this because we have read through so many bad marriage devotionals. You know, the ones that are like unrealistic where you read them and it's like, you just need to spend seven hours in quiet time a day. And we're like, ah, <laughs> oh, we're out. We're out. We are out. The uh, this is like for the marriage couple on the go where you want to stay connected. But even if you read it by yourselves and then talk talk about it together. It, the chapters are short. There's lots of place um, for you to write notes to each other. Take uh, there's, there's application in here. So um, and we want it to be something where you guys can realistically do it and it can cur- encourage you. And, yeah. and you can pick one up in the lobby. You can scan oh, nice. the QR code. That's right. If you didn't say, get it, you could get it online. And I do want to say this to you, even if you're not married, because we got a lot of single ready to get married. Um, <laughs> prepare your heart now. Okay, cool. Become the mighty man of valor that God's called you to be now. Yeah. Become yeah. the Proverbs 31 woman that he's called you to be now. You can read through this and prepare now for what is to come. Come on, make some noise. Or it's a good, good. it's a good gift too for a young married couple in your life, like to give to them when they get engaged. Yes. You know what I mean? So yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, great. great and they have multiple, multiple other books. So just make sure to dig into some of the incredible wisdom that has come out of them, which is why we have them yes, here today, is. because they are so full of wisdom, so full of such incredible, just the journey has been so rich. But first I want them to introduce themselves. I know they have some pictures for us of family yes. and all of those wonderful things. So tell us a little well, bit about yourself. Before we do that, let us just say thank you for having us. We, yes. we love this church, this house. You guys, every time we've come, it's, it's built us up. We always are just inspired. Yeah. Um, and, and we love you guys. And we love that what, what God's building through you and your heart yeah. and DNA. We celebrate with you the groundbreaking yesterday, all the things God wants to do in Houston and beyond. So it's an honor to be here. Thank you guys Huge. so much. Come on, give it up for your leaders right here. So good. Beautiful. They sing, they dance. There's nothing they can't do. It's amazing. <laughs> dance yet. Yeah, that's at the Christmas There was production. some dancing. There was some moving there. I mean, I've definitely this got some production? moves. I liked yes. it. Like, it was like Jagger, like Jagger yeah. over here. Yep. Uh-huh. But yeah, but yeah, we're the Lust Coast. Jenny and I have been married 20 years this year, Let's which go. is awesome. Woo. We're excited about it. 
Um, we have five kids. We live in Whitefish, Montana. Uh, we brought a picture of our fam there. We were this summer on some trips uh, abroad. We did seven countries, all with carry-on luggage. Wow. Uh, so check not Amazing. one bag. Uh, but this was us in front of Big Ben there. There's, Big uh, Ben in Mississippi, or is that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, our oldest is 18. Our youngest is seven. And then um, there's, there's Jenny and I, and we're just always amazed. We get to be in, in rooms like this and meeting people that love Jesus like we do. So Yeah, we, um, we get to lead a church called Fresh Life Church um, in Montana and Salt Lake City and Oregon and um, Idaho. Um, but you're so kind to say that we have so much wisdom. I feel like we were, we were telling you earlier, I feel like we've, we might have some wisdom because we've learned the hard way in a lot of things. And so God's just been so kind. I mean, we got married us. and planted a church four years later. Oh. And uh, wow. so we were at the age of 24 and 23. We, you know, have, we were babies. I'm older, by the way. A little bit older. <laughs> She's got that uh, Robin the Cradle energy going on. Um, <laughs> I like older women, uh, woman, uh, older woman, uh, but she... Singular, um, yeah, singular. Yeah, thank you. Older like, woman, singular. Learning that first, just, just singular. Yeah, That's the right. first thing I want you to write down. Singular, <laughs> singular. One, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we've learned a lot the hard way. Yeah. Wow. You guys have had a journey, for sure. And I think that's what is, what's been so amazing about your story, because uh, what you guys have walked through, some of you know the story, if you followed the Lesko's life, um, but it should have broke you and it should have taken you back five steps and said, I don't want anything to do with this. It should have made you shake your fist at God and said, if this is the kind of God you are, I don't want anything to do with you. Um, but you did, you did the opposite and God has breathed on your story and he's breathed on your life and continues to build so much faith in so many others. So I want to jump in because when, when we have, when we invite uh, guests to this platform to, to speak into this family that we love and adore, there's always something that the Lord highlights yeah. for us that we, we feel from the two of you. And for us, when we look at the two of you and know your journey and hear the details, we think of, of the hope of Christ. Yeah, we do. Hope is such a significant thing significant thing for us as believers, but even just personally. And then we're Hope City, y'all. Like on, we're, we're about on. the hope of God. Yes. But when I think of the two of you, there's a different level of hope that, that we see in you. So would you share a little bit about your journey, whichever yeah. of the pieces that you would like and how God... I think it's so beautiful. Your, your church is literally built on hope because that's not just what God does. That's who he is. So, yeah. Romans 15, 13 so says he's the God of hope. Yeah. Yeah. So hope, hope is what he deals in. Hope is who he is. It's literally his identity. So if you have God in your heart, you have hope in your life. Yeah. And that means you have a, a, the hope of a brighter tomorrow. Because he has begotten us again to a living hope. Yes. So our hope's Amen. alive yeah. because Jesus is alive. Yes, the very thing that killed Jesus became the source of life to all of us. We celebrate the cross. The cross was the worst thing that anyone's ever gone through. Yeah. Yes, it was a symbol of death. It was a symbol of it's over. The party's over. And yet the cross became this symbol of celebration. Yes, we call yeah. the day he died on the cross Good Friday, right? Yeah. So, so when, when we, that's where we begin. That's where we start. Our starting point is death becomes good. Yes. So in our lives, we can look at anything we face, everything you go through in this life that's hard, that feels like you're being slaughtered, that feels like you are being destroyed, yes. and that becomes a place and a symbol of resurrection. So we have hope. We can have hope because we have the God of hope, right? So in our lives, in our stories, we think about hope like an anchor a lot because the Bible says that hope like an anchor for the soul is both sure and steadfast. Yes. Now, I don't know if you um, ever need an anchor except for storms. When it's calm out, no one's like, get the anchor. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. It's like we need to be anchored in a time of storms. Yeah. And in our story, uh, the anchor became even more meaningful in our life when we went through a serious storm. Yeah, we were. We had been married seven years. <laughs> and um, we had planted our church. We, it had been five years that we planned our church. We had four beautiful daughters. And it was Christmas time, 2012. And we were wrapping Christmas presents. We were getting ready. We were, it was five days before Christmas. So um, obviously getting ready for our church services, um, planning. We were planning a trip to Disneyland. That was part of the girls' uh, Christmas gift. Um, and so we were just getting ready. It was just busy. And um, it was a Thursday night, which is our 
date night. We have Thursday night date nights, generally is the date. Um, but that night we were wrapping gifts, wrapping presents, and that night um, our daughter Lenya, who's our second born daughter, she would be um, 17 right now, but she was five years old and had an asthma attack. And um, Levi was doing CPR, and all of a sudden, excitement and getting ready for the holidays and getting ready for our Friday family day became um, terror and um, trauma and pain. And our daughter just suddenly went from Levi's arms to her heavenly father's arms, and it was just a whirlwind of, um, of pain. And we didn't see it coming, um, but we're so grateful that God saw it coming. And I think that sometimes we can look and see, what, God, why would you allow something like this? But I think when we know that our God is our father and that he's good and he's our shepherd and the way that we see him, um, it changes the situation that we're in um, from something so painful and something so horrible to clinging tightly to our anchor in the middle of the storm. Yeah, that's so true. I think sometimes, and I'm sure you guys experience this, but to um, hear you even say those words, sometimes, sometimes we look at our lives in layers of, of how bad it is, right? Sometimes we look at our lives and we think, well, my life wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Or you can really, really relate to that story. I think I'm sure you've seen it. Um, the breath sucked out of the room when you tell your story, literally, when someone says, Oh, wow, you, lo you lost your child. But I think it's so important to hear from you all what redemption yeah. looks like. Because I think we, we have this narrative in our minds that God can redeem this and God can redeem that. Mm -hmm. And he can redeem a broken marriage. He can redeem a lost job. Um, you don't replace the marriage. You don't replace the job. But redemption is different. Yeah. Would you talk to them about what redemption looks yeah, like? Know, I think the thing is, is like all these things can feel abstract at times. But our our anchor, our hope in Christ, wasn't theoretical. It was our next breath. It was it was yeah. relying on Him. Because literally, if something could kill you when it happens, it would be that. I mean, I would have torn my heart out of my chest and given it to her if it would have helped. Yeah. Yeah. And to watch this, she feels so helpless. We prayed. We begged God for a miracle. And God's plan in that moment was to bring her home. He healed her fully of, of anything that she'll ever face again. And we know that she's with Jesus. Yeah. She's not gone. She's gone somewhere. Yeah. When I leave tomorrow and go back to Montana, I'm, I'm not gone. I went somewhere. Lenya didn't leave this world. She left this world to go to heaven to be with Jesus. Yeah. Scripture says, Scripture. in my father's house are many mansions. So she's in heaven. She's waiting for us. She's in front of us. She's not in her grave. Yeah. And so I think what we had to do is we had to once again take Scripture and look at our situation through it. Because we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Yep. If I look at it by sight, everything's been taken from me. I don't get to walk her down the aisle. She's not up in the hanging out with your kids in the Sunday school right now. Like, yeah. She's, she's not here. But if I look at it by, by, by scriptural view, if I put the lens of faith yeah. on, yeah. I look at it and go, hold on, she's not behind me, she's in front of me. Yeah. I've got more linea in my future than I do in my past, right? Wow. So, so we had to choose. You have to connect to an anchor. There's a chain. And so I think for us, we, we just had, had to learn really quickly, you have to stay connected to your anchor. Yes, sir. And so in staying connected to him, redemption is everything he does, right? Yeah. How do we get our living hope? Death. Death brings resurrection. You said a moment ago, this thing could have broken me, but it didn't. I actually say to you, it did. Mm. Just like you broke ground yesterday so you could build on wow, it. Wow, come on. Just like we broke the communion bread so it could be wow. blessed. God always, listen to me, always, always, always blesses what he breaks. So if God allows you to be broken, it's because he's preparing to bless you. My I gosh. dare you to believe. Whenever you feel brokenness in your life, get ready for blessing in your future. That's because good. that's how he gets it ready. He breaks it and blesses it. He breaks the ground and builds on it. So he broke us. He destroyed. We felt completely broken. And yet he built us up bigger because we weren't alone in our trial. And to see how, you know, we love these Instagrammable, sticky statements. He'll work it to your good. That's the Bible. Yeah. But... There was a couple steps, well, multiple, but a couple significant ones that we've been talking about. Um, God breathed the book. He gave you a book idea that was connected to her name. Can you share on that for just a moment? And then what he asked of you and what you guys stepped 
into a moment of faith in and how it produced a miracle. It ended up a seed. Why don't you start by telling about the phone call we got right when we got home from the hospital that night? So um, it's <laughs> so we had to get into our car and even looking back in the in the seat and seeing Lenya's um, car seat empty. It's like, how do you do that? Yeah. How do you drive away from the hospital? Um, but we had to. It's like we have to take these babies home. We have to. We have to go home. So we get home, um, put the babies to bed. Um, yeah, little ones. Yeah, Clover was one. Uh, Daisy two and a half. Len Olivia was seven. But um, we get home and we get a call from the hospital. And in our minds, we're like, it's a miracle. Like she's she's a, she's alive. And they call and it's the opposite. And they say, hey, um, can we need. We want to... We forgot to ask you while you were in the hospital, but... We want to um, harvest anything that we can, which they said her corneas and her heart valves. And so we sit down at the bottom of the stairs, or we were by the... We were gutted. We're, we don't we, make... This is years removed, but we were gutted. We were bawling. Yeah, because it's 12 we're years now. Heaving. So in that moment, we're like, no way. Like, we're not, not going to do that. We girl, can't... You know. No. But then we're like, Yeah. Yeah. We realized the Holy Spirit and Linya would want us to say yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, so we, we said say yes. yes. And they take her corneas and they take her heart valves. Well, three months later, we're going through the mail and we get a letter from this organization that facilitated the, the, the transfer of her corneas. And they said, Mr. and Mrs. Lusco, we want to let you know that two blind people now can see. Each of them got one cornea and they now can see through the, through, the, through the eyes of your little girl. And, and, uh, it dawned on us that they were seeing life through my daughter's eyes, and her name means lion. Linya means lion. Wow. So we realized they're seeing through the eyes of a lion. Yeah. And then it snapped into focus for us because the Bible says that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And so anytime... It's a phenomenal I, book, by the way. I mean, okay. well, praise God for that. We are grateful for it. It's been printed in a number of languages, gone around the world. Hundreds it's of thousands beautiful. of people have read it. But what, what, what it is, and I think the reason it, it touches so many hearts is because every one of us have our pain. You haven't had to have lose a daughter, maybe, maybe you have, but you've gone through something significant. Sure. Yeah. And whenever God allows there to be impossible pain, it's because he's getting ready for incredible power because crushing releases anointing. And if you'll be mad with God, if you'll be angry with God, if you'll be confused with God, if you'll bring your pain to him and let that brokenness be like the spike nard at his feet, cr let your crushing be what he uses to produce the anointing. And then you get to walk in power because pain is a passport and it will take you to places you have no business being. And so hard so times in our lives shouldn't be a reason we think God's mad at us, but that we believe God's preparing to use us in a different level wow. and in a different opportunity. David went through, through decades of living in a cave before he wore the crown. Joseph was in a pit before he was in the palace. So your pain is preparing you for your future of power. Wow. Wow. You also, good. yeah, you can clap. That's so good. Jenny, you said something. Um, last service, you talked about how your other babies, you're like, I, I had to get up. You now the righteous person falls seven times, but they have to get up again. And can you unpack just what you were processing in the natural, but then how God intervened every single day? Yeah. Like, I don't, I need you a month from now. I need you a year from now. I need you five years from now, but I really need you right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that first night, we all fell asleep in our bed and waking up. And those of you who have gone through significant loss, you wake up the next morning and it all hits you again. And it's like, oh, that wasn't a dream. Like, that's reality. And that's what, we're, that's what I'm living in right now. And, and, and I remember in the mornings, um, Lendia, she would actually get up early before all the other kids. So I'd always have morning time with Lenya. Levi would have morning, morning time with Lenya. But um, getting up in the morning was so hard. But I didn't have a choice. Like I had to, I had to get up. I had to feed Clover. I had to change her diaper. I had to feed Daisy. I had to snuggle Olivia who had just lost her best friend. Like I had to, I didn't have a choice. And I don't know if I didn't have our kids. I don't know if I would have stayed in bed. I feel like I, I might've. But I had to get up and I had to keep going. And I feel like God in those moments was reminding me of how much I need him in every moment, in every minute. Yeah. And there are times where it's every second you feel like, I just need Jesus for this breath. 
I need Jesus for this step. I need Jesus. Like, and I feel like that's our life of faith that we're meant to live. Like, we're not meant to try to do anything on our own because we can't. Jesus yeah. himself said that, he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Yeah. Um, abide in me and I knew, apart from me, you can do nothing. And so I take yeah. that as I can do nothing without him. Yeah. And I feel that almost every day. I feel like I can't even face this day without Jesus. I need him, the center of my life. I, I, I need him. And so I feel like that practically was something that just brought me forward was that I just, I need him today. I need him right now. And, I, and I'm so grateful that I had babies to take care of and just kind of forced me forward. Yeah, yeah. That's so, uh, so challenging to even hear. But I think so much we put God in this box of, um, we need God for this situation. And we need him for that situation. And we need him for this year of my life. But you look at life differently. We talked at, um, at the beginning, at, before we even started, about the posture in which we approach life is the way we receive, right? I love you that. You look at different life different when you realize, God, I need you every moment. And sometimes we walk through life and we encounter the great pains, which I would put this in the category of one of the great pains of life. Um, sometimes we walk through life without realizing just how much we all need Jesus yeah. until we encounter the great pain, yeah. until we step back and we say, I, okay, I don't know how to get out of bed. I don't know what to do. But the, the people that it impacts, you said it, the people that our great pain in life impacts the most are the people we're in relationship with. Mm the people that we are doing life with, the people that we are surrounded by. So the question that, that I would love for you to speak to is how do you speak encouragement and faith into the people that you love and care about when they're walking through pain and difficulty, oh, that's good. when you yourself are in a painful, difficult space in life? That's such a good question. And I think you, you start out, of course, with the, the nucleus of your cell being the sun, Jesus, yeah. right? I mean, everything spins around the sun. We're on a planet spinning around the sun. Everything has to have a center. And if we make the marriage the center, it's not gonna work mm -mm. because our marriage is not enough to sustain our soul, right? That's like driving a, a five-ton truck across a, two, a, a bridge rated to only hold two tons. Um, so mm -hmm. if you make Jesus the center, then your soul has a center for everything else to be built on. And then I think you, you fan out from there to every other relationship in your life. And, and when you look at a marriage that has to weather a storm, listen, it's part of the vows. It's, yeah. it's going to happen. It's mm -hmm. true. I mean, I brought a couple photos because we stand at the altar and we say, hey, like, I marry you for better, right? And like, I, I would think for better would be like this, tri this photo here. Here we are, uh, 20 year wedding anniversary. We go to Italy. We were in, in a boat in Venice, right? And you stand at the altar and you say, I'm marrying you for better, for richer, right? I'm right. marrying you for health. Right. I'm marrying you. And we think in our head these times, but we forget about the other half of the wedding vows that yeah. when we stand at the altar, we're saying for worse. Hmm. We're saying that there could come a day where we face death. That's us standing at our daughter's grave. We think about not just health, but for sickness, right? We're not just going there for the good times, but for worse too. So we're at the wedding altar saying the other half of the vows, but in our minds, we're thinking only about the sunshine, yeah. mm -hmm. only about the champagne, so only about the roses, but it's always a part of the deal. So in our relationships, we are all going to face difficulty. We're all going to face loss. Jesus said it. In this world, you will have trouble. Right. The question is going to be, how are you going to go through trouble? How are you going to face difficulty? And yeah. only Matthew 7, if your marriage and your heart and your ministry and yep, your life yep, yep. are built on the solid rock yep. of Jesus Christ, yeah. can you face the yeah. storm and still be triumphing and still be prevailing? But then you have to remember, too, um, when you face those hard things, you're going to be facing them either together and united or on your own. And so for Jenny and I, what gave us the strength of it is, I mean, and this is a photo someone snapped at our, our daughter's celebration of life service. This is literally a funeral. I don't know how our hands are raised, but they are. 
Wow. They're raised to God. And I, and, I, and I say that, but I do know how. I mean, I don't remember that moment. It was all spiritual muscle memory at that point and adrenaline. But, but the Holy Ghost had been tucked into our heart. Because if you went a week back and two weeks back and 10 years back, and you go, well, you work at church. If you go back to when we were in high school, before we were in church, young people hear me. We had lived yeah. and built our lives on the solid rock with our hands yeah. raised to Come God. On. So in the yeah. trough, our hands instinctively were raised to the heavens. So what you're raising your hands to in the good times is going to be what you're going to reach for in the hard times. So if you're good. reaching for a bottle, if you're reaching for social media, if whatever so you good. reach to that is your identity and builds your worth on, that's what you're going to reach out to. But the gods of this world can't help you in trial. Yes, sir. And so if what you do today in the, in the good days is preparing you for the difficult day. Yeah, and I just think, where else could we go? I was just talking to someone backstage, and, she, and we were talking about um, showing up to church after a tragedy. It's like, where else are we going to go? Like, yeah. what, what else are we going to do? At Jesus, um, there was a time, John 6, 66, where people were just leaving him, and Jesus turned to his disciples. Wild. 666 six, right? is a verse that says the disciples turned back and didn't follow him anymore. Yeah. That's wild. It is wild. It is wild. So then Jesus turned to his guys, and he's like, well, where are you guys going to go? And he was like, well, you, where else are we going to go? You alone speak the words of eternal life. And so it's like so many people run from yeah. the God who designed them to go through hard things and to, to build them up in the midst of hard things, and they run away from him. But God is able to, to handle our anger, yep. our doubts, yep. yeah. our frustrations. Yep. And if we just run to him, that's what he's calling us to. And as our shepherd, and I love that you're talking about posture. And I was just thinking about the posture of being in his pasture and being his, his sheep in his pasture. The posture of the pasture. Yeah. It's really good. But just he's our shepherd and he's yeah. our good shepherd. And you talked about how you had to, I preach a lot out of Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, one of my favorite verses. Mm. The Amplified Version specifically says those that wait, look for, expect, and hope in him, to my hope today, will gain, y'all know, y'all know this, will gain new strength. Yes. Because you can't be the mom you're called to be, you can't be the dad you're called to be, the, the spouses, the leaders, the pastors, without access accessing that daily strength. So how did you do that? Because you talked about how people take smoke breaks. So oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, it was in a season of life. I love it. I was in a season of life where all my kids were little and uh, changing diapers all the time and making snacks and cutting apples into little apple fries because that's the only way they would eat them and all these things where it just feels like you're doing it all the time, constantly, and there's no end in sight. And um, I was telling Levi, I was like, I just see so many people, like, they'll be outside just taking a smoke break. And they're just like, seems like they're really having a, just a good time. Except, uh, except for the fact that they'll be, like, next to, like, trash cans and stuff. People, like, have, <laughs> people in the summertime, they give it up here because it's so <laughs> Because there's outside. no, yeah. They're all about that zin. Nah, they're I'm just dropping that zin right. is what they're doing. I'll tell you. <laughs> not here. Not Hope City. Oh. All right, keep going. You just hit your tooth with a microphone? Dear Lord. So what she started it's doing... As long as it's still intact. We need to get okay. her a foam one, you know what I'm no, saying? Like a sexy microphone? No, I actually microphone. chipped my tooth one time because I laughed and I hit my tooth oh. on a I've glass cup and I chipped my tooth. Anyways, I'm that fine. That makes me freak out. Like, she just did no, that. You're good. Tooth. I think she's good. Okay, okay, okay. So anyways, I was like, I need, I need a smoke break. But I need a holy smokes break. Oh. Like I need to, I need to go outside for a second. I just need to be like, okay, God, I'm so at the end of myself. Like, I... There, I have nothing more to give. I actually literally need you to infuse me with your love, your strength, your kindness, and go back into that room and love my kids and honor my husband and be a kind human. I need your help in this. Yeah. And so that was just kind of something so powerful. in powerful, and she will literally do that in the pantry. She'll do it in the bathroom. She'll take a walk around the house real strength. fast. She'll do it just in a moment. She, like you said, she got news. She mounted up with wings as eagles, right? But what's powerful about that is that it's different. That flies in the face of our misreading of the book of Lamentations which says God's nope. mercies are new every morning. Every morning. Yeah, that's true, but they're not only new every morning, right? right? They're also new every hour. They're also new every moment. Oh, I, mean, I love that. Think about it this way. This is Space Town, USA, right? We got some, some Space City, space city right up here. Um, if you go up on the ISS, um, you'll, you'll see 16 International sunrises. Space Station. Just you think case. they don't know International Space Station? I don't know. I don't know. know I don't know if I would know. Okay, the sorry. The International <laughs> Space Station uh, has 16 sunrises and sunsets a day. That's because the higher you go, the more there is to see. 
So That's from good. God's vantage point, so good. the world is always in a perpetual state of sunshine the, and sunrise and sunset. So, so, so it's almost realizing, like, I don't just have to write this day off and go, this day is no good. This day is, I'm having a bad day. Let me just go in, in my sweatpants and eat ice cream, you know? But we can reset ourselves. Sounds amazing. It, well, it does. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> Sorry. We can reset Not ourselves. To sell. You can have a sunrise anytime you need one. So you can good. get new mercy. You can get new mercy anytime you I need I love it. that. You just have to take heart. So I love that. It's great. But that getaway and you access that new strength, recognizing his mercies are new. Hope on demand. Yeah. Because yeah. You're Hope never, on demand. You're never really alone. We talk about this a lot, that ER visit. You're not alone. That moment you guys were seemingly together but alone at the graveside. No, he was. His presence was, yeah. was there. That holy, uh, holy smoke break. I think that's a book title. We've talked about it every week. <laughs> All the we had, book we We'll let you tell our publisher that. Ken you you propose it to us. Ken Clater had uh, Jungle Juice to Jesus. Okay, Ooh. right. Dr. Hagen had I do my best work at lunch, and yours is <laughs> holy smoke break. Boom, boom. She said. Okay, <laughs> I want you boom. to help us with this this particular scripture, Romans twelve twelve. It says. Rejoice in hope. It says, be patient mm. in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Can you talk to us from your, from your perspective patient about tribulation. yeah the patient in Oof. tribulation part? I think that when we read scriptures like that, even specifically this one, the rejoice in hope, all of us are like, yeah, I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to find my joy and my hope. I can wrap my brain around that one. Um, and I'm going to skip over the second part. And then I'm going to go on to being constant in prayer. I'll be constant in prayer. I'll be <laughs> joyful in hope. But the patience, patience. and tribulation part, um, yes. none of us are good at that. No. So how, how would you two speak to that aspect? What would you say is the most impactful way to be patient in tribulation? I think it comes back down to the sovereignty of God. I think it really does come back to your view of God. If you're, I mean, think about Isaiah 40 that you're referencing starts out by saying he sits above the, the, the circle of the earth. To him, the nations of the earth is like dust in a scale. He's, yeah. he's counted the oceans in his hand. Yeah. Right? Like, like, you know how like, uh, you, you can get a little bit of water in the hollow of your hand? Yep. Like if you have a little hair on the wall in your shower and you're like trying to get it Sorry. to go down. <laughs> you know, like you have to keep like pouring Practical. the water. Practical. Okay, real quick. Because yeah. you don't want to touch it. It feels like so a low blow. you just keep getting enough I've water to throw it. I've never on the wall. It's a beard hair. It's true. It is a beard hair. But you guys yep. know whose hair is who. If it, you know what I mean? Definitely. That's a very... But, but here's the thing. We're going to know when it's mine. <laughs> but, but think about it. That's, that, the Bible says God can fit the oceans in the hollow of his hand. Yes, sir. So if you're looking at your problem and you're thinking in your head that there's some small God who's all stressed out and nervous, you're going you're gonna to be nervous, right? You become like your God. Whatever you worship, you become like. So if you have a small God in your mind, you're going to become that? small. That's good. If you worship, you'll become like. So listen, you worship money, you're going to rise and fall like the stock market. Your value is going up and down depending on what's going wow. on in your life. But if you worship God who's constant, who never yes. faints, who never gets weary, yes. who, yes. whose power is under, unsearchable, yes. oh, who, yes. who gives power to the weak, right? And then think about that verse. What's the end of it? It says that if you wait on him, if you trust him, yep, yep, yep. then what's going to happen? You're going to mount up with wings like eagles. You're going to run and not grow weary. Walk. You're going to walk and not faint. Yeah. I know my publisher, if I turned that sequence of words in, they would say, Levi, that's anticlimactic. <laughs> let's end with the eagle. They would say, let's walk, <laughs> then let's run, and then let's mount oh, up, nice. right? <laughs> but God wants it to be that you understand that there's going to be seasons of your life where you're going to ride like, a, like an eagle on some jet streams. Yeah. Yep. There's going to be seasons of your life you're going to get a run. By God's grace, we've got to run a little bit. Yep. But you know what? There's nothing more important in the entire world than walking with God. Wait, that it man. is the main thing. Oof. That it is the prize. That so knowing good. it is the goal. Because if you're flying too fast, if you're running too fast, sometimes you can't hear the still smallness of... Come on. How is the, the walk? And, and the walk is, I'm walking with the one who yeah. counts the stars, yeah. who knows them by name, who brings them out like we would bring out like our pet st stuffed animal. He's given cutesy names to all the stars. So when you... So I'm going somewhere. So when you know who he Please, is, like, okay, wait a minute. you will trust him. So yeah. be yeah. patient in tribulation. Listen, sometimes my kids go, Dad, what are you doing? Dad? Go, Just give me a second. Just wait and see. Just look what I have planned. Look what I have up my sleeve, right? So, good. so he knows what I don't know. So when I'm in tribulation, I go, oh, oh, oh. And he goes, just give me a second. Yeah. Watch me good. work. That's so Watch good. me yeah. work it all for good. Yeah. Why I've got I'm up to something. I'm doing something. I yeah. am good. I do good. Yes. I am hope. I have right. So, so and just give him a minute. Yes. Yeah. And it's perspective. I think for us, it's it's 
it's our perspective and how we see. It's how we see God. It's how we see the things that we're walking through. And I just love that in James, um, he says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing, and we could be confident of this, that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And I just think of the fact that the trials, the tribulations, Jesus himself saying, in this world you will have tribulation, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. It's the perspective. It's like, oh, we can focus on the trouble and the tribulation and the heartache and the suffering and the pain and the struggle, or we focus on the fact that we have a savior who's overcome it all and has a plan in it all. So So we can go through these things. We can actually consider it pure joy. We can consider it uh, something awesome because it's working in us something that wouldn't otherwise be built up, that wouldn't otherwise be um, instilled in us. Yeah. And we look back and we see his faithfulness. Yep. Why can't we look forward and see that he's going to be faithful and he's going to work in this, even so though we true. can't understand it or and see it? I also it. think this relates to marriage, too. One of the things we talk about in the book is the diff- we, we have such a small word, love. I love ice cream. I love my mom. I love my wife. I love Jesus. Like We just have that one <laughs> word. But, of course, we know the Bible has such a nuance for yeah, love. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and we bring out some of the different ways you're supposed to love your spouse in the book. I think we have a list of them here. Love like a sibling. Love like a soldier. Love like a scholar. Love like a sprinter. Love like a servant. And these are different ways to love your spouse and be patient in tribulation with them, battling wow. for them, not against them, to help your spouse get sanctified yeah. with the washing and cleansing of the water of the word that they may be a pure and spotless bride. Like, you're meant to be an agent of your spouse's change. And so I think sometimes so we good. give up on people, walk away, oh, well, they're not this. Well, you were supposed to help them get there. Wow. You, were help, you were supposed to help them become what you want, wow. right? So I think you, you, when you see yourself as an agent of change for your spouse, that by praying for them, by serving them, by loving them, by, by fighting for them, not just against them, you could actually help them become what, what you desire. Same thing's wow. true of a church. I don't like that church. It's not this. Well, how are you being a part of the change you want to see in the world? The church is you. How is the church doing? How are you doing? What are you doing to help the church execute the vision? Wow. So good. Well, I just see like the, the title of this series, It's Not You, It's Me. I think it's taking the responsibility that, okay, I'm not going to blame this. I'm not going to push this on any, anyone else. Like, I'm going to be responsible for what only I can do. I, I read, I don't remember what, 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 where it was, but it said, what does success in your role look like? And I remember writing that down and just looking more inward of like, okay, I could push the blame on that on leadership on anyone like no one's leading me or I don't know how to do this or I wasn't raised in this way or I don't know but it's like okay God what what is success in my role right now like how do you want to work in me right now and not pushing it on Levi of well he's not leading me right or he's not saying the right thing or he's not doing the right thing but how am I doing what God's called me to yeah that's so true, because the truth is, when we face the difficult things in the Word, um, how it talks about we're going to go through the difficult things, and I believe you've both said this, but when we walk through difficult things in relationships specifically, at the end of every day, at the beginning of every day, at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and 11 o'clock, at every hour throughout the day, it's ultimately you in Jesus. Yeah. It's ultimately me in Jesus. Who I show up in in relationship yeah. is based upon me in Jesus or right. my lack of me in Jesus and a whole lot of Jackie showing Fine. up. And while I might be able to accomplish some things, yeah. I'm not ever going to be able to accomplish the, the power and the favor and the faith in the relationships that yeah. I am blessed to be in right. if I don't show up as a whole lot more of Jesus yeah. and a little bit of Jackie. That's the problem, <laughs> yes. you know, because Proverbs 4.23 says, keep your heart with all diligence mm, for out of yeah. it flow the issues of life. If the heart goes bad, 
everything in the life suffers for it, yeah. right? And so what are we watching out for? We're watching out for the different heart conditions that will creep yeah. in when we're not walking with Jesus, yeah. which wow. I think we have on the screen a little, there's a lot in the, in the marriage devotional about what can happen to your heart. You can get a double heart. You can get a proud heart, a divided right. heart, a right. stubborn heart, right? I mean, you think of, I think we have this asset we sent. You guys can take a picture of and look these verses yeah, up, up because there's a lot of things that can happen to your heart that ain't what God mm-hmm. wants to happen. Yeah. And so when we get yes. away from these things, when we get away from walking with Jesus daily and hourly on our own, these are the sort of things that are going to creep into our, our hearts. And so you go, well, I know I should do this. My, uh, the heart wants what the heart wants. The heart will get you into a mess of trouble yes, because so it's much. deceitful so and desperately wicked. Yes. Right, but when right. we keep coming to Jesus and dying daily, even though it doesn't feel good, we're letting his truth override our feelings so good. and, and letting Amen. him set the pace for us. Amen. So good. I love, I pray that you all did take some Yeah, leave it up. Leave, actually, put it back up one more time. Yeah, take a picture of that. It even works on a droid phone. Take a picture. <laughs> I apologize. Burner phone. I don't know what you got. I don't know I your apologize. life. Apologize. We love you. No matter. Get the what book. They're all in there. No matter what yeah, kind of buy the book. See that? <laughs> That's true, though. All of these are also in the book, but it's true. All of the issues of life come out of our own hearts. And again, the posture that we choose in the moment. You said it a couple moments back. Um, we are good at looking back at seeing what God has done, yeah. but we struggle. In the moment of pain, in the moment of grief, in the mo- grief, in the moment of our unknown, yeah. how are we, what what happens next? We struggle in that moment to see God's still going to work it all yes. out. He is going to He's going to work something out that we never could have imagined could have been could have been birthed from this. And He's working on it. He's yeah. working on it. He's so working just give on him, it. give him a hot second. We get yeah. so impatient because we got Amazon Prime delivering stuff we didn't even order yet. You think about it. Who delivered it? You read doorbell rings. What's that? By the way, that might be a whole word for oh, somebody. I'm telling you, it's probably already today. happening. <laughs> today on Amazon. But God doesn't offer sanctification with Amazon Prime overnight shipping. You know what I mean? You just got to do the hard yards of walking with so Jesus. Yes. So people walk away like it didn't work. What do you mean it didn't work? You gave 30 years to the devil. You gave 15 minutes to God and you got frustrated. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's going to take a hot second. It's going to take a second. Yes. He's the God of sowing and reaping. And you don't get to give God a, a, you know, a, a year and then you gave the flesh a decade and expect there's still weeds coming from old seeds you sowed. Yeah. You got to start putting new stuff in come the on. ground and you'll watch it come. So good. Galatians 6. If we don't lose heart, we will receive that harvest. Yeah. So, so, so here's the thing about seeds. They never look like the harvest they contain. So, so our seed of I saying yes to the cornea is going out. Our seed of Jenny, you know, telling me to go back in and share the gospel with the people in the hospital, which we did that night, inviting them to church. We wow. saw a harvest of salvation. We saw a harvest months later of those people that we got to later share the gospel with, by the way, that we later on released a kid's book called Roar Like a Lion and got to re- raise $100,000 yeah. in 24 hours to give cornea to people in India. So, but the harvest comes after the seed goes in the ground. The problem when the seeds going in the ground, you feel alone, it feels cold, you feel unseen, yeah. you feel neglected. But Jesus said, unless a seed dies and goes into the ground, it yes. remains alone. But if it does, it will produce a harvest, some yep. 30, some 60, some 100 yes. fold. So don't be afraid to sow your seed in faith and watch God bring that harvest. Because it really yeah. is seed so time and harvest. I grew up, yeah. uh, my whole family's farmers. And as a kid, I didn't understand the process. It was so boring. They, they, they stirred up the ground. They planted the seed, and we waited. And I would ask my grandpa, what's going on? He said, no, 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 be patient, young grasshopper. Be patient. And, and we waited, and we waited, and we waited, and then something popped up out of the ground. And then we watched the harvest season that came. So to go through such tragedy, but to have two people walking around with sight, to write a book that has now impacted those in India, to see the seed, the time, and the harvest. I want to encourage somebody across our campuses today. God has not overlooked the seed. God has not overlooked what you put in the ground, what you've sown with your time, your talent, your giving, those prayers. I remember my mom, she was praying every day that my drug dealing, drug addict, alcoholic, womanizing dad would come to know Jesus. And she would pray every day and say, there's a well-known artist who blew up. He had a secular, a huge, huge following in the secular space and then a big one in the Christian space. 
and was recently in the past six months said, well, I, I'm not really into the Jesus thing anymore because there's some prayers he didn't even answer. And I saw my mom, we watched our mom go from, nobody he said it, so I'm gonna believe it. Nobody he said it in his word, so I've gotta believe it. If he's a liar, then it won't work, but everybody's telling me, including the pastor, that God's word does not return to him void, so I'm gonna believe it, because if he said it, he will come through on it. My dad walks with the Lord today. He's no longer an alcoholic today. Praise he's God. no longer a drug addict today. Wow. He's faithful to my mom today, because of seed, time, and harvest. Yeah, the devil wants you to have a funeral for your future, but God wants you to celebrate in faith, knowing that what goes into the ground in death is going to lead to life down so the road. Good. You know, I, I just speak over you. There's life coming. There's resurrection coming. There's there's dancing that's going to happen. Your dry bones are going to be filled with God's spirit. Amen. You're going to dance again. There's joy that's going to come again. And you, even even the sadness that does remain, which will which will come here and there, is going to be a picture and a reminder of the fact that you really did love that person enough to be sad for them. But there can be joy that's not a betrayal of your loved one. When we feel joy and laughter and happiness, that doesn't betray our love for Lenya. That our, our sense of healing connects us to her too. And so when we walk in healing, when we walk in dancing and rejoicing, we're doing so fully present with our love for her. And so don't, some of you are hanging on to your sadness because you, you, you think it's the only thing that keeps you connected to a loved one. Mm. But let God heal you. Amen. Your healing can connect them too. Pray? I felt really strong about that. We didn't do this the last service. Would you pray over that moment? Mm. Would you just close your eyes for a moment, y'all? Father, I think about Jacob, who, whose son Joseph was taken. And he had a funeral for Joseph because it's, he said, surely my son is dead. His son wasn't dead. He was in Egypt. And some of us, God, have been convinced by the devil we need to hold a funeral for our future. But today, God sees there is life. There's a plan. There's a hope and a future. If you need to latch on to that hope and future, could you just raise your hand all across the church, every church campus, every, everywhere? If you just need to latch on to that hope and a future and choose celebration and faith, you need to choose celebration as you sow. You need to choose celebration as you believe and trust. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing oil of your spirit that runs down the heads of these that you love. They're seeing God. And may they give you space and time to work. And in the meantime, may they sit at your feet, God, rejoicing. God, knowing that if we, if we sow with tears, God, we will reap with celebration. Thank you, Jesus. You can put your hands down. I just feel led by the Holy Spirit to, to continue on in this moment asking, is there anyone today who needs to trust Christ for salvation? You need to get right with God so that you have the promise of life beyond the grave, of heaven after you leave this world. If that's you, it can happen through Jesus. All across the church, pray this prayer with me if you're ready to trust Christ for salvation. Pray it out loud. Mean it in your heart. Church, say it with us. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner and I can't fix myself, but you can. So I ask you to. Thank you for new life. I give you mine in Jesus' name. And if you're praying with heads still bowed and eyes still closed, every location, if you're, if you're saying, today I give my life to Christ, I'm a new creation. I'm a son or daughter of the King of Kings. The Bible talks about the lifting of holy hands. So I'm going to count to three. And if you just gave your life to Jesus or rededicated your life to him, when I get to three, I want you to shoot your hand up. One, two, three. Shoot your hands up. Shoot your hands up. Come on, church. Celebrate with me. Come on. Hands going up all over this room. Every location. Church online. God sees you. Let's go. And you do have a next step, and we'll cover that at the end. But before we do, can we just honor Pastors Levi and Jenny Lesko for sewing into the house today? We love you guys so much. Thanks, Levi. Wow, wow, wow. Make sure you grab the devotional on the way out. We're a little limited on time. We went a little bit long, so we're going to button this up. Well, I pray that you got some encouragement out of today. How many of you feel encouraged today? Let's go. Because the truth is our hope is in Jesus. And he is so good and so, so faithful good. and so true. If you gave your life to the Lord today, we do have next steps for you out at our Connections booth, out in the lobby outside. Yep. We have a team out there prepared yep. to answer questions for you and help you get connected to relationship with Jesus. We are so proud of you for lifting your hand and surrendering your life today and also today you baptism so Sunday ready. I know you're ready. let's make some noise <laughs> if you want to take the next step in your public profession or faith we took all the guesswork out of it for you go out there follow the directive of our team we would love to come cheer you on as we celebrate 
water baptism with you. Also, if you want to jump on the team, be a part of what God's doing at Hope City, HC Connect is immediately following this service. Hear more about who we are, unlocking everything that God has in your life through the local church. Meet us out in the lobby. That's right. And tonight, family, tonight is our night of worship. Y'all, you know if you have been to one of our worship nights, you want to be here tonight. So make sure that you come back. Starts at 530. At 530. Show up early. And join us for worship. Our prayer team will be up under the screens at the end of the service. If you have any prayer needs, yep. please, please allow us to stand with you in prayer and yes. agree with you in faith. Amen. And also why supplies last. Grab the new marriage devotional out there. Lift your hands towards heaven. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Be really gracious to you. Turn his countenance towards you. And may he give you peace. We'll see y'all next week. We're actually leading the last week together for the relationship series. Get out of here. We love you.